Thank you. I'm very happy to be here to present uh, uh, about how to build a scalable blockchain in Scala. Um, so our project is called uh, Alephium. Uh, below you can find the GitHub, you can uh, start to look around if you want to see the code first. Um, so in this talk, I'm gonna to, uh, talk about the following points. First, uh, a short introduction to blockchain. Um, I'm, I'm not sure how many of you uh, have been diving into blockchain. So I, I'll give you a short introduction. And then talk about the scanning challenge of blockchain. Uh, after that, uh, I will present how, how we implement a scalable blockchain in Scala. Uh, and uh, a few lessons will, uh, uh, lastly, a few lessons will be shared. Mm, first, what is a blockchain? It's a, a, a if you ask different different people, you you'll get different uh, answers. In my opinion, a blockchain is a distributed ledger that operates in a trust minimized environment, and the environment is usually a large scale peer to peer uh, network, and there are usually a lot of network participants, uh, and the all of the uh, typically all of the participants they will download and uh, validate the new blocks from the network. Uh, some of the some of the participants they can also uh, propose new blocks so that the network can make progress. The blockchain can make progress. Um, as we say that. All of the network participants they will download and uh, uh, verify the the, block, the new blocks from the network. So uh, there will be some protocol, right? And all of the four nodes uh, in the network they need to follow the same protocol. And functionally speak, uh, speaking, um, a new block is actually just a, a pure function, a pure uh, state transition function. You. Uh, you first have the older blockchain state, and and then when the when your node receives a new block, it's just a execute the block, and the update the the state of the blockchain. You get the new state, uh, in the in uh, in practice, different blockchains have different uh, uh, states. For example, in Bitcoin, the uh, blockchain state is just the state of the UTXO, uh, the UTXO state. Uh, if you are not familiar with UTXO, it's basically the the balances of uh, all of the audits. Um, and uh, on each one, the state is more uh, more generic. It basically can be anything. It can be balances. It can be just uh, uh, the state of smart contract. Um, so blockchain has been like been uh, existing for like now more than 10, 10 years. Uh, uh, until until now, there are still quite a lot of challenges uh, to to be uh, resolved or to be improved. But one of the uh, right now, one of the big challenges is the uh, scaling challenge. Uh, actually, like all of the uh, engineering uh, uh, fields, uh, scaling is always the problem. So for, for blockchain, right now the, the biggest one is um, the throughput. Uh, big Bitcoin can do seven transactions per second, and the Ethereum can do 15 uh, transactions per second on, on average. Uh, there are some new blockchains, they they can uh, achieve higher transaction throughput, but they need higher high-end savers. And this is not good for decentralization because uh, a lot of people will not be able to run the, the four nodes and will not be able to uh, validate all of the transactions locally. Yeah. Um, so scanning is not just about transaction throughput. There are uh, other things as well, uh, like latency. Uh, a Bitcoin latency is pretty high, like 10 minutes on average. Uh, Ethereum is better. Uh, there are some other blockchains with even better latency. Uh, but usually, there's a no free launch. Uh, that different blockchains comes with different trade-offs. Uh, usually, you have to trade off 
uh, among throughput, latency, security, uh, node performance, and a lot of a lot of other dimensions as well. Um, our project, RFU, works on uh, blockchain scanning. We we value the uh, uh, decentralization very much, so we try to scale the blockchain and follow in the same uh, philosophy as Bitcoin to keep the 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 funnel. Uh, very lightweight. So even with the low end uh, uh, computers, you can you can run uh, the nodes, and uh, and at the same time you can uh, get benefit from the uh, scalability. Uh, how do we do it by design? Uh, first, we um, we come up. We propose a new sharding algorithm for the proof of work and UTX model. It's called a block block flow, and with this algorithm. You can basically execute uh, blocks in par uh, uh, in parallel with uh, multiple blockchains, and at the same time, you can prove that the the security is uh, is still uh, as the same as a single blockchain. Um, and we come we come up with a new transaction model as well. It's called a self UTX model. Uh, with this model, we can uh, on one hand we can uh, uh, execute smart contract just like the Ethereum model, uh, but at the same time we can keep the uh, the the great immutability of the Bitcoin UTX model. Uh, so uh, with this new model, we can execute the, some of the transactions in parallel as well because of the immutability. Uh, last, we we propose and uh, we design and implement. A brand new virtual machine to improve the uh, execution of the blockchain. Mm. So the virtual machine is uh, is the core part of the uh, state transition of the blockchain. Uh, I/O, CPU, gas, all of them can uh, can be bottleneck if not designed well. So, for example, for EVM, uh, right now the I/O is is one of the main bottleneck. Uh, so. Because we are a new blockchain, we have the chance to to really consider all of these uh, uh, bottlenecks and uh, try to 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 uh, mitigate all of the, the uh, limitations. Yeah, we started we started this in two thousand eighteen, uh, working full time. Yeah, it's been uh, like four plus years of research and development and go. We we thought about Rust in 2018, but we did not uh, decide to go with it because uh, back then it was really not mature enough, uh, especially the cryptography libraries. Uh, we we don't feel confident uh, enough about them. And Goblin is is just a uh, like the type system is really not enough. They don't even support generics, and that was. Uh, uh, definitely not uh, not an option for us. Uh, and on the other hand, Scala is is really great at writing large scale um, distributed systems. I, uh, Spark was a, a a great example in 2018. Um, yeah, the I think the 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 most important reason is that uh, the whole team really uh, we 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 are very familiar with Scala and uh, uh, we love Scala. So. Yeah. Yeah. Now we have we have the language. Uh, what what would be the the challenges if we try to build the blockchain in uh, in, in Scala? First is uh, blockchain requires a high standard of code safety and the correctness because the um, all of the nodes in the network they have to keep the same uh, piece of protocol and the execution has to be kind of bug free because if they are critical there's a critical bug in the uh, in the implementation uh attackers they can they can get free to, free token or free coin from the from the protocol uh the second second channel is the performance uh because it's a large scale distributed network and uh, uh, the validation has to be very efficient so the execution engine has to be efficient as well uh, the third one is backward compatibility, and this is uh, uh, very unique in blockchain because 
uh, when when new new node joins the network, it usually needs to download all of the history blocks and uh, need to kind of re rebuild the the the, uh, the state from the first block. So it means the full node has to be compatible with all of the different versions from day one. And this can be uh, like can introduce a lot of engineering complexity to the system. Uh, yeah, and uh, uh, there are some new challenges for us uh, because we are sharding blockchain and sharding is pretty new uh, in the space. Uh, probably you have heard that the Ethereum they have been working on sharding since since 2016, right? Uh, but it's not done yet. They are still in the phase phase zero. Now they are working on phase one. Uh, but we we took another approach, and which is much more simpler and much more uh, easy to 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 uh, to design. Uh, but it's a new pass, so it's going to be uh, challenging. Yeah, and we have to build everything from scratch uh, in Scala. Yeah, that requires a lot of work. So how do we solve all of these challenges in Scala? Uh, first, let's ask uh, GPT. Uh, I think the, the answer is great. Uh, uh, the the, the chatbot tells us how to do uh, everything in Scala. And if you only see it at a very high level, I think it's, it's a perfect answer somehow. Uh, yeah, it covers almost all the all of the the, the, the topics, uh, but yeah, engineering is always about like details, right? Devil in details, talk and talk is cheap. <laughs> uh, so yeah, now we got this great plan from the the chatbot. Uh, let's see how how turn it into actual code, right? Uh, so here is our tech stack. It was, we, we choose this stack in 2018 um, and we don't change it that much because like usually if something works for the blockchain, it's, you'd better not change it. <laughs> uh, for concurrency, we choose, we use Akka, Akka Actor. Uh, yeah, unfortunately Akka Actor is, uh, we use it to, to 2.16. Uh, so yeah, as we, as you all know that it's not maintained anymore right now. Uh, so, like during this talk, I heard a lot of great words about zero. Maybe we'll can see to migrate to zero at some point. Uh, but I have zero experience with zero for now, so <laughs> I cannot guarantee that. And networking, we use Akka TCP database, RuxDB. This is pretty much uh, almost all of the kind of blockchain use RuxDB for the key value then uh, storage. Okay, uh, sorry for the network issue. Uh, we, we are back, uh, fortunately. Yeah, so I'll, I'll continue with the tasting part. Yeah, tasting is really very, very important is, um, to, to make sure that the code is correctly implemented. Uh, yeah, we, uh, we, 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 we have a lot of... Uh, unit tests in the code base. Right now the coverage is more than uh, 90 percentage. Uh, that is for the for the whole uh, the whole repository. And we besides that we also have integration tests and the uh, uh, simulation tests. Uh, we 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 use very strict scar style and uh, what's removal rules. Um, uh, this is kind of a very small thing but I found it very helpful. Uh, we also thought about formal verification, but this is kind of uh, not not so practical right now. Uh, it, it's not easy to, to do it in Scala, uh, so we are exploring the future. But there's one thing probably kind of doable is for the our uh, our smart contract language is probably uh, very much doable. We we could implement in in into our language. Yeah, so that's the about how to how to properly implement the protocol. Oh. Um, and then the next challenge is how to implement it efficiently, right? Um, 
the first thing, of course, the, is the best uh, we want to have is zero cost abstraction. Uh, this is something like the, the Rust, Rust uh, community has been uh, promoting a lot. So in, in Scala, I think we can also do a lot, a lot of them, uh, like with value class. But value class has a lot of uh, uh, issues. And it's not, it's not that uh, it doesn't work in, in a lot of cases. But Scala three has a lot of new features that uh, that can make zero cost abstraction more uh, much more doable. Uh, and if zero cost is not possible, we always want to uh, to have low cost abstractions in the in the code base. Uh, so we don't use very like heavy abstractions in general. Um, we use um, in most of the cases we use customized collections uh, because Scala collections is kind of a black box and sometimes the performance is uh, not really uh, so predictable. So we use this uh, customized one, and it's going to be easier to optimize and to to kind of to to improve. Uh, we use act model for concurrency. Now, uh, yeah, well, suppose we build the the blockchain. We want people to to use it to interact with it. Uh, so here's our approach. We uh, all of the kind of the interaction goes through uh, REST API. We use HTTP and to uh, and use the tools to generate the Open API uh, specifications. In, and then we, uh, based on this open API specification, we uh, generate the TypeScript SDK. Of course, you can use any tools to interact with this blockchain, but uh, for a lot of uh, the app developers, uh, TypeScript is really the, 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 the language for it because you can build website, you can build the apps, you can uh, build even the, 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 the back, backend server in just one language. It's very convenient. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's not only for TypeScript. It's very easy to test and integrate with our language. We we have one integration with Go as well, and we use that to build the bridge with other uh, blockchains. And this is very uh, dev friendly. Um, oh, one of the very important component is the virtual machine of the blockchain. Uh, so I want to uh, spend some time here. We build a brand new virtual machine to uh, mitigate and eliminate some of the flaws in the EVM. Uh, this part I will not go to details. Uh, and then we built a new language called RAF to, to work with the, the virtual machine. Uh, it's a very simple kind of DSL. Uh, and is the, the source code is kind of like about 5,000 lines of codes. And Scala is really, really good at writing uh, this kind of domain specific virtual machine and domain specific, specific languages. Uh, on the right side, you can see is a very simple smart contract that is kind of essentially just the, the, the Uniswap smart, smart contract. Uh, it, it's really, really simple in our language. Uh, and you can see we, we have like uh, notation supports. You can, uh, this, this notation brings a lot of uh, safety to the, uh, to the asset system. All right, so that's pretty much uh, a very high level uh, like presentation about how we uh, how we build the blockchain in, in Scala. And there are some lessons and the, all of them are very well known. First, we stand on the shoulder of the, the others, uh, especially Bitcoin and the Ethereum. Um, so, actually, the, the both the Bitcoin community and the Ethereum community they have been proposed a lot of ideas and good design, good trade-offs to the crypto space. And we learned, really learned a lot from them. Uh, the, second, the second lesson is always keep it simple and stupid. Yeah, uh, stupid. In my opinion, stupid is really underrated. Uh, we, we found that in a lot of cases, we, it's, very attempting, it's very tempting to introduce kind of smart abstractions or smart data structure, but 
usually like we regret <laughs> uh, we did that. Uh, the third lesson is te technical dates is a leverage of engineering. Uh, yeah, it dates is is not good uh, as we have have know from fan, uh, finance. Try to eliminate technical dates as as early as possible. Uh, this is especially important for big uh, for for blockchain because uh, because of the the version uh, management in blockchain protocol is is very very tricky. Uh, typically, if you have implement something in your protocol, and the, if you want to change it later, it's going to be very very hard, very hard, and it, it can be uh, very risky because of the version uh, compatibility. Uh, last last one is the dev uh, experience is really uh, important if if you build the, the the product that you want people to use it and build the platform you want uh, the the app developers to to work on that uh, yeah if the if dev experience is not great you're going to receive a lot of questions from people yeah that that's all um so if you are interested, you can visit our GitHub. Uh, all of the all of the uh, the work are open sourced. Uh, we have some documentation as well. Uh, you can visit. Uh, we are still adding more documentations, uh, but right now is 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 good to get started. We have launched the maintenance uh, since last December. Uh, it has been working very well since the maintenance launch. There's no downtime, and uh, at his peak, there were five five hundred nodes uh, in the whole network, uh, and we we are planning to upgrade the virtual machine uh, in probably in January. Yeah. So if you want to to kind of uh, play around with blockchain, especially in Scala, I think uh, Alfio is is a good project to go. Thank you. Thank you. All.